Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. We have talked about in the past whether or not to buy gray market or imported cameras. Uh, gray market being a camera not originally intended to be sold in your region. So in other words, if you live in the United States, something that was supposed to be sold in Thailand or somewhere overseas is not a uh, camera that is intended to be sold in the United States and as such if it's sold there they call it gray market you can run into issues with uh, warranty we've seen people having issues with all the accessories not being in the box some of the settings in the camera not being able to be properly set for your region things such as NTSC and PAL for video uh, and we have a, a viewer writing in here Darren who wanted to share his experience and unfortunately it's not a good one so I wanted to share it with you um, because it'll serve as a warning perhaps or give you a little bit of uh, feedback. This is the type of experience where people ask the question and are nervous about buying gray market and here's why. Hey Matt, I gravitated towards your channel after needing to do some research on camera purchases. Sorry, I need my glasses. Um, You've provided a great deal of information that has allowed me to make decisions on purchases, so thank you for that. I wanted to share with you an experience I had that viewers might want to be made aware of. I did some research and watched your videos on the difference between gray market and U.S. market cameras, and I'd heard stories about how the gray market dealers will use bait and switch, brackets, not advertising that it's gray market when you try to order. Here is my experience. I did a search online for the cheapest Panasonic GH5 from a vendor that takes PayPal. A lot of the lower sites don't take PayPal, and that's a red flag for me. So I'd like to just point out, I agree with that entirely. I would only buy from reputable sites. And for myself, I would only buy from reputable sites uh, through Amazon, B&H, Adorama, or if there's any other reputable ones out there. But those are the three that I would buy for because I know, or buy from, because I know I'd have some recourse if there was a problem. Uh, and then the ability, somebody to take PayPal gives you some recourse too. But for me, I would limit it personally to Amazon, B&H, or Adorama. I purchased through lots2save.com and immediately received an alert that they charged my PayPal account. Anxious to receive the camera, I went back to the order confirmation, and it essentially stated someone would review the order and get back to me once the order is confirmed. Hmm, I was already charged. This is odd. And yes, that is odd. That's a flag right there for me because most reputable vendors do not charge your card until your item ships. I know that's Amazon, b and you know, they don't put that charge on your card till they ship your item, and I think that's the way a reputable vendor should operate. So that is a flag. I called them and spoke with a guy named Andrew. He said, this was the international model and you want that. I said, yes, I had already purchased a third-party warranty on it. He then proceeded to tell me it didn't have Wi-Fi. I was put in a spot and didn't want to confirm what he had to say. I asked how much he could sell the U.S. model. He said 1890 was the lowest he could sell it. So I bought it. I received an international camera in a U.S. box that someone had put a battery in and configured to be NTSC. I don't know what home it was before I reset it, but I can tell you the camera was pre-configured when I got it. The U.S. box had a fake serial label on the side, which matched the serial label of the camera. I had some issues getting autofocus to work. I did a reset so to make certain I was starting from scratch, which is when I was alerted the region frequency had changed and that I had to restart the camera. The system then asked me to confirm home, and it was default to Asia. At this point, I knew I was screwed. After confirming a U.S. time zone, I checked the frequency, and you can guess by now it was PAL, not NTSC. I called Panasonic to confirm whether this was a valid U.S. camera. They wouldn't even discuss it with me. They said I would have to talk to the seller. I suspect because it's gray market. So I escalated to a supervisor named Gus, and he confirmed the serial number does not exist in the U.S. system, which confirms it's gray market. Andrew, the seller, said I should have registered online and not attempted to talk to Panasonic, that it was my fault for trying to talk to them. He continued to say I received a U.S. model and that he couldn't offer a refund for the additional amount I was charged. If I wanted a refund, um, then I would have to ship it back. I told him at that point they, what they were doing was fraudulent and I would dispute the charge and disconnected the call. Seconds later, I received an RMA email that stated, per our store policy, opened or incomplete returns that do not have all the manufacturer included items cannot be accepted for return. Interestingly, there was no manual in the box. There's some pretty shady stuff going on out there. If someone ends up buying a U.S. model from one of these vendors and attempts to utilize warranty through Panasonic, they are going to be screwed. They will also be unable to obtain a third-party warranty since, most likely, by the time they need to repair it, it will be after 30 days. 
which is what I find is the amount of time you have from original purchase date to purchase a third-party warranty. Not sure if it's worth mentioning, but I find you to be the number one YouTuber which discusses this stuff. Thanks for listening. I have a video of the box, serial number of the box, uh, serial number on the camera, and me going through the reset of the camera to confirm PAL and Asia defaults. The box also has a U.S. model printed on the side of it. So thanks very much for sharing that um, little alarming story. I'm sorry to hear you went through that. This is why people are hesitant to buy gray market and why I personally, unless it was one hack of a deal, probably would not. Uh, I only buy Amazon, as I mentioned, including sellers through Amazon. I don't really care unless they look suspicious. But if they look reputable and they're selling through Amazon, I know I have recourse through Amazon if there's a problem. Uh, and I use B&H and Adorama as well. I'm not saying there's not other good ones out there. Those are the ones I do tend to default to. Um, this is the problem with gray market. Warranty and getting satisfaction on warranty and then receiving stuff that's not set to your region, it doesn't want to stay set to your region, um, and it may be a problem just to even use it. Uh, so uh, these are gray market issues, and unfortunately they happen to you, but thanks for sharing them with us so that our viewers can be aware of this. First-hand experience, somebody that's had issues with gray market. Um, you know, and, and probably the biggest thing in here is here, here is do you get any recourse? Most of the time, a lot of time, you're not going to have any recourse. You've spent money, you're stuck with a camera that may not even work or... Uh, at least is defaulting to different regions and crippling your video or you can't use the video settings in it. Um, it's a big risk. And that's what it comes down to. Is it worth the risk of potentially saving a little bit of money and ending up with all these problems or a camera you can't use or it doesn't work? I don't think it is in general and I don't usually buy a gray market. If I was buying, say, a lens that I didn't think, you know, especially if it wasn't an, uh, an image-stabilized lens, like, say... Uh, an older prime or something from B&H and happen to have a gray market offering. First of all, I know it's B&H, so it's reputable, and I know it wasn't some repackaged shady thing. It's just B&H was able to get some from another region. I know I can return it to them if I change my mind, and they're a reputable dealer. Uh, so I might consider that. But cameras, I tend to stay away from gray market. So um, thanks very much for sharing your experience with us. Sorry to hear you had to go through this, but I do appreciate you wanting to share and make our other viewers aware of this. I'm going to throw it back out to our viewers. Uh, if any of you had similar experiences that you want to share, uh, other notes of caution to add, let us know what you have to say about it in the comments below. Um, thanks again for sharing, and stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.